real manos manos <sighs> oh hi groovy ghoulies uh, I'm sorry I meant to start up right now with the relaunch of Manos at the Movies where I talk about uh, cult movies and underappreciated films uh, that I really like to talk about but I kind of got stuck on uh, Chris Druckmann's customer service. Uh, it's one of those automated things. You see, I went to ChrisDruckmann.com and got Stuckmanized, and I found it really underwhelming. So I'm trying to return the unused portions. And I'm just on the phone now with their automated system, and it's just, uh, it's just the worst. Yes! Yes! Um... Look, this will be a minute, so just roll the credits. The 1970s weren't exactly the best period for vampire films. Sure, there was the Count Yorga movies, Blackula, Martin, and 1979's Dracula, but that was pretty much it. Vampires were often the subject of Saturday morning cartoons. They were mostly considered old hat. The decade was more frightened of Satanists, maniacs, and killer bees. This is why Lamora a Child's Tale of the Supernatural is such an interesting film to watch. It's written by Richard Blackburn and Robert Fern, uh, with Blackburn directing, starring Cheryl Smith as Lila Lee and Leslie Taplin as Lamora. Set in 1930s America during the Great Depression, it begins tragically, although not in the way we normally see in a vampire movie. A gangster, Alvin Lee, arrives home early, finding his wife in bed with another unattractive man. He shoots them both and runs off, fleeing the scene to avoid the police, killing an innocent bystander as he raced from the murder scene. He leaves his 13-year-old daughter, Layla Lee, homeless. She is taken in, though, by the reverend of the local church. The reverend is played by Richard Blackburn. You may think this is a good thing for Layla, but until you see that scene where Layla is singing in church, the churchgoers don't seem all that welcoming of her. Instead, they view her as an oddity to pity. She's made to feel alienated at school. Even the reverend, who is supposed to be someone that she can trust, appears to be fighting the temptation of putting the moves on this 13-year-old girl. Anyway... While on the run from the cops, the father is taken captive by Lamora and her monstrous minions. Layla soon gets a letter from him. The letter explains that he's sorry about murdering her mother, he's become ill, he's dying, he needs her to come see him uh, so he can ask for forgiveness before he dies. Oh, and uh, don't tell anybody uh where you're going i i need it to be a secret no oh, so you know nothing fishy about that layla decides to make the dangerous nighttime journey to find her father through 1930s america at every turn she meets men that are one step away from sexually assaulting her seriously the man that she asks for directions, the ticket taker at the bus station, the bus driver, all look at her as if she's lunch. The vampire that eats children as if they were a bag of Twizzlers is the least creepy character she runs into. On the way to Lamore's house, the bus is attacked by beast-like monsters. They pull the rapey bus driver from the vehicle, leaving Layla to escape right onto Lamore's doorstep. Now that I mention Lamora again, let's talk about her. Leslie Taplin plays Lamora with this uncomfortable way about her. She's stoic, and yet she still draws you into her world. She claims to be a good woman, 
running an orphanage and she's the only one taking care of Alvin until they can reunite, the longer Layla stays at her house, the more she distrusts her. She won't allow her to see her father due to the illness, and the old woman that works for her is fairly menacing, and those children giggle as if they're in on some sort of cruel joke. What do they want with Layla? Lamora is a film that seems to be about a girl's journey into adulthood without the, com without the comforts of childhood protecting her. Men come at her like predators. Even when you think it's safe, it, people like the Reverend still have this unseemly motive. This is a very similar take on growing up we've seen before in works like Alice in Wonderland, The Wizard of Oz, and Labyrinth. It's funny how these stories often focus on girls becoming women. Young boys also have an expectation put upon them as they grow into men as well. I imagine it has something to do with the fact that um, many of those options offer young men a chance to have control over their lives in roles that aren't available to young women. I mean, I remember being 13 and feeling pressured to fit into a traditional role. I can only imagine the crazy amount of pressure put on young women to fit in, to conform, and to submit to what others want from them. Fantasy has been a popular method of telling this story, though I think horror might be a bit more fitting. What Leila discovers is that Laura, Lamora, excuse me, also has plans for her life. The vampire has lost someone close to her and wishes for Layla to take their place. Lamora goes to good lengths to make sure that she feels welcome, and seductively dances with her, and even bathes her. The difference between what Lamora is doing and what every creep she runs into, it's because it almost feels like she's trying to become a teacher for Layla, training her to be the predator instead. Much like 2015's The Vi the Witch. <laughs> uh, much like 2015's The Witch, a young man, oh, excuse me, a young woman has to become something that's considered a monster, quote unquote, in order to survive a world of horror. Lamora, a child's tale of the supernatural, doesn't lean on jump scares or long info dumps about lore. Instead, no, it's about creepy, dreamlike journeys into adulthood. They are, there are some drawbacks to this film. Uh, the low budget can be felt in some of the makeup effects and the ADR here and there. There is a sexual tension meant to be felt between Lamora and Layla, which would be great if it weren't for Layla being 13. The actress... Cheryl Smith playing Layla is 19. They could have easily allowed the character to be 19 without hurting the film. However, I do understand the point of becoming sexually aware at that age and how everything brings, uh, kind of like everything comes to you at that time. I, I get it. Uh, other films have hit that note uh, with just a bit more subtlety. The acting uh, from the entire cast is wonderful along with the blue-tinted lighting, atmospheric soundtrack. It's a vampire film that fits in between Labyrinth and The Witch. I suggest you check it out. Manos the Movies is back on a bi-monthly schedule. Tune in next time when I talk to you about Nightbreed.